We thank the Lord that uh, we are able to study the Word of God in um, the process of becoming more like Christ each and every day. And that we will love God with our hearts and love our neighbors as ourselves. In this process, there are two but one. One in that there is a change, a transformation, an inner spiritual transformation from God. And secondly, is that God uses us to bring His good news to all people on this earth. And so those two go hand in hand. We grow in the Lord and we see that the kingdom of God is, um, is widened in this kingdom. And so I'd like to, um, this morning, together we will study the Word of God and the theme, Christ Reliance. Let us look at the Word of God in John 10, verse 1 to 18. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens, the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not uh, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved, and he will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that you come to us and you give us your word to help us to follow your ways, your holy ways. Lord, thank you that you are in the midst of us, you're present in the midst of us, and your spirit is spirit of truth, and you help us to understand your truth. Help us, Lord, to humble ourselves and to submit so that we can follow your ways. Father, Ruth, this time so that my words and our meditations will be pleasing to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God wants us to rely on Him rather than rely on ourselves. God wants us to rely on Him rather than rely on anything else. But instead of relying on God, people often has a tendency to rely on other things. They may rely on their understanding. So the Word of God says in Proverbs 3, 5, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. God gives us wisdom, knowledge, but He also tells us to not rely on those things but to rely on Jehovah God. God gives us wisdom, strength, 
riches, but God also tells us to not rely on those things. Jeremiah 9:23 says, "Thus says the Lord: Let not the wise man boast in his wisdom; let not the mighty man boast in his might; let not the rich man boast in his riches." Many people think that they are at peace in a city that is grand and in a fortress. But the Lord says, "Do not rely on those things." Psalm twenty, verse seven: Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. People rely on bullets. On guns, on power, their own power. But the Lord said, "Do not trust in in chariots and all." But we rely on the Lord Jesus Christ, on Jehovah God. And some people rely on their own goodness, good deeds. In Ezekiel thirty-three thirteen, if he trusts in his righteousness and does injustice, none of his righteous deeds. Shall be remembered, but in his injustice that he has done, he shall die. People cannot rely and trust on their own righteousness or in any idols. In Isaiah forty-two seventeen, they are turned back and utterly put to shame who trust in carved idols, who say to metal images, "You are our gods." And some people also rely on mediums. In Leviticus 19:31, do not turn to mediums or necromancers. Do not seek them out, and so make yourselves unclean by them. I am the Lord your God. As children of God, we cannot make it unclean ourselves to go to mediums and rely on.、Um, Witches and all that. Deuteronomy eighteen ten to twelve. There shall not be found among you a charmer or a medium or a necromancer or one who inquires of the dead, for whoever does these things is an abomination to the Lord. It is an abomination to the Lord for those who do these things. For because of these things, your Jehovah God has poured down upon calamities upon you. And people also rely on other things. There are those who rely on、um, progress and technology and all that. Some people rely on it, but we cannot. We use it as tools, but not as a reliance. Or that you rely on medication. You know what? Medication cannot bring about healing. Only God can bring about healing, and God uses those medications to help us. We can use them, but do not rely on them. And God gives us these things, but we do not rely on these things. Our reliance is totally on the Lord Jesus, our Lord Jehovah God. There are those who study the Bible, and those who. Who learn from experiences to trust totally their trust, place their trust in the Lord, who has the power to save and has the power to protect and provide. The children of God in the Old Testament as well as the New Testament must learn to rely on the Lord. This is one of the lessons, the main lessons that God had taught the Israelites. In Proverbs three five to six, trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make straight your paths. God is one who keeps and guides and leads His people. This is a picture that is used in the Old Testament and the New Testament. In the Old Testament, it says that. God Jehovah is the shepherd of the Israelites, and David had written many psalms to speak of that. That God shepherds His people, and in the New Testament, Jesus said that I am the good shepherd. 
Psalm 100 lets us see that God is our God and we are His people, the, peop the sheep of His pastors. The sheep totally relies on the shepherd to protect, to provide, to care for its needs. You see that evolution is very unreasonable. They say that we come from animals and such as a, a wolf, a, sh a sheep has been evolutionized or transformed many years ago and finally mankind came to being. And they say that wolves appeared and then there were some sheep. And we see clearly that a wolf, every time it is, it gives birth, it gives birth to a, like a herd. Just like a dog, it would give birth to many do puppies. But the, the sheep, it only gives birth to one sheep. Every year it only gives birth to one, one lamb. But you know that a wolf likes to eat sheep. How can that be? The sheep is very, very, um, not bold. And so he, it is very kind and gentle. And the sheep does not dare go to, um, water to drink because it is, it cannot protect itself. It's not like a giraffe or whatever else that's very quick. If there is a, if there is an alligator that jumps up to eat the sheep, then it can escape, right? Um, other animals can escape quickly, but a sheep, it just gives its life to the alligator. But you see, the sheep lasts to now, not because of evolution, because God, our God, created man to take care of the sheep. And the sheep cannot protect itself. It does not know where there is green pasture, where there is still water for it to drink from. But the shepherd takes care of it day and night. It's the same way the people of God is, um, is remains because God cares for us like a shepherd. We know that there are wolves roaming around, but we know that God protects us and we cannot protect ourselves. We do not know which way to go. But God guides us and leads us. This is the way to go. He has a staff to lead us, to guide us. He has a rod to guide us and protect us. And so we go next to Him and we do not fear, for He is our shepherd. And so therefore, we must totally rely on the Lord as a sheep totally relies on the shepherd. We are the sheep of His pasture. We also must rely totally on God. God has the power to guide us as a shepherd guides his sheep, we are guided by the Lord. In verse 4 it says, When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. In the Middle East, they would um, shepherd very different from people who take care of uh, the ducks in Vietnam. They would be in the back pushing the ducks to go forward. But in the Middle East, the shepherd goes first and the sheep follows the voice of the shepherd. If we rely on the Lord, then we need to study, to learn, to listen to God's voice. We need to be familiar with God's voice. How? How can we be familiar with God's voice? That is, we need to study God's word. We have to... Um, God will use His word to guide us. If we do not know God's word, when He speaks to us, how do we not know that that is His voice? We need to be familiar with it. We need to study His word, meditate on it, and obey it. Then we will know the voice of the shepherd for us to follow. And God calls us to listen to His voice and follow His voice. After an airplane was hijacked and ran into one of the towers on 9-11, Many people in the tower were stuck there because of a very uh, enormous cloud and they did not know which way to go. And there was a police, Isaac Hobie, he ran into the dark and tried to find those who were stuck. And he heard voices of other people and he called out and said, 
follow my voice, follow my voice, follow my voice. And five people followed his voice and escaped, escaped death. I'm sorry, six people followed his voice, the voice of that policeman, and were reached safety. Follow my voice, follow my voice. And that is the calling of the shepherd calling us. When we face difficulties, when we have gone the wrong way and are lost, the Jesus Christ is the shepherd calling to us to follow his voice, to come to green pastures and to come to peace. The sheep hears the voice of the shepherd, and the shepherd calls the sheep by name. Are you able to call, to hear the voice of the Lord calling your name? He knows you. He wants you to hear his voice. He wants you to hear him calling you, and we will follow him. And when the sheep are called out, the shepherd leads and the sheep follow because the sheep is familiar with the shepherd's voice. The sheep does not hear a stranger's voice. The stranger comes and calls it, but it will not follow the stranger's voice. Jehovah's Witnesses or Mormons, Mormons or other people who come uh, saying that you must worship Mary or you worship the saints, then you will be saved. We know for sure that that is not true because the Word of God says, Before you, before me, that shall have no other God. Before me, you should not worship Mary. Before me, you should not worship the saints. We know the Word of God and we know His voice clearly, for we are to worship God alone. Do not bow before any other gods, for only Jesus Christ is God. There is no other. Only Jesus is God. Is it that we listen to God's word and then we avoid it? Oh, I'm sorry. Do we listen to God's word when we uh, study the word of God? Yes. Do we listen to His word when we pray? Yes. And so when we have difficulties, we need to follow God's voice instead of being lost in the dark. Jesus Christ is the Good Shepherd. Our needs are met when we rely on the Lord. Do not rely on our own understanding. Listen to God's word. Read His word and follow His word. And you will know that He is the one that guides us. And the second is that the sheep needs the protection of the shepherd. The sheep relies on the shepherd. Be like I have shared with you, the shepherd, the sheep has nothing to protect itself. It has nothing to fight back. But the sheep is very strong because the shepherd is, uh, protects the sheep. In verse 7, So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. The door protects the sheep. The door leads the sheep into peace for place, a safe place, and out into still waters. The door here is Jesus. Jesus said, "He, I am the door. I bring about peace and safety for the sheep. I protect the sheep. If a robber or a wolf wants to come in and to steal the sheep, he must climb over the gate or the door. In the past, the shepherd often uh, is the do is the door. He he lit he sits down and sleeps right at the door at the gate. And so, God teaches us. Um, God has taught His people this lesson so many times. God has led them out of Egypt, and God has um, destroyed the army of Pharaoh to save the Israelites. They have seen his miracles, but and they trusted in God. But then when they entered into the promised land, they did not obey God, and they failed. They failed dramatically, drastically, for they know that they don't have enough strength. They relied on themselves. It was self-reliance. And they saw themselves and say that, oh, we are so weak. Uh, that uh, army is so strong. They are uh, so grand, and we are just like grasshoppers. 
and so they were fearful and did not dare go forward, and they failed. And after that, God said, "If you don't want to go forward, then you go somewhere else." And they argued against God. That is when people relied on themselves. There are two that we see. There are two consequences. If they look at themselves and they see that they don't have the, I'm sorry, if they see that they have enough power and、uh, ability, then they will be pride. But on the other hand, if they look at themselves and say they do not have the enough power and strength, then they will be hopeless. So these are the two consequences of those who rely on themselves. But those who rely on Jehovah God is protected and has peace and has hope. In Second Chronicles fourteen eleven, there are two things that occur in the life of the King Asa, King Asa. And there are the enemies who attacked. And Asa cried to the Lord his God, "O Lord, there is none like you to help between the mighty and the weak. O Lord, there is none like you to help. Help us, O Lord our God, for we rely on you, and in your name we have come against this multitude. O Lord, you are our God. Let not man prevail against us, against against you." Uh, we, we rely on you, Lord. Apart from you, we cannot fight back. This great army is against us, Lord. But Lord, help us, Lord, and let not man prevail against you, Lord. And so, praise the Lord. This King Asa,、um, he witnessed the power of God to save his people. And we also look in Second Chronicles twenty twelve, and King Josaphat. Oh, our God, will you not execute judgment on them? For we are powerless against this great horde that is coming against us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. We rely on the Lord, and we have to face our own self, our own sins. We face this world. The opposition in this world, we have to face with the devil. It has more power than us. We only have limited power, and the devil has much power. But our God is greater, and the devil will find all different ways to destroy us. But it cannot destroy us if we are in Christ. He is the one who protects us. He will keep us. And if that is so, we have a song to sing in the midst of the night, right? As Paul sang in jail. It's amazing that we see that when Jehoshaphat prayed to God, he said, "Now we rely on you, Lord, for sure you will bring us victory." If we read in Second、uh, Chronicles chapter twenty, we see surprisingly that the Uh, King Jehoshaphat placed the Levites and the priests in the front to sing, to sing to praise the Lord, not to stand in the front with swords, but to stand there to sing praise to the Lord. We may face difficulties in our lives, as a great horde or army is against us. When difficulties come, it will come. And we do not look at those things, but we look upon the Lord, for we see our God and know that our God is Almighty God and full of power, and our hearts will sing praise to Him. The God's kindness is greater than anything, and my lips shall praise You, Lord. And we will have songs from the depth of our hearts, for we know that God protects us, and. Um, uh, just recently, there was a gentleman who walked the uh, uh, what do you call it?、Uh, tightrope walking, and he walked from Chicago. And he, as he was walking, he was praying、um, on that tightrope. He was walking, and he was talking 
in a microphone, and he looked down at the people、uh, cheering him on, and he lifts up songs of praise to the Lord, and people recorded that, and it was.、Uh, It was videotaped and shown on TV. For he relied on the Lord in the midst of the winds blowing like that. He held the the stick,、um, the pole, and he was able to cross on that tight rope walking. And he praised the Lord for that, because it only took a little mistake, and he would fall to his destination destiny. But he relied on the Lord. And today we also rely on the Lord. We can lift up songs to praise the Lord. Second Chronicles thirty-two seven to eight says of、uh, King Ezekiel. I think Ezekiel. He says, "Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or dismayed before the king of Assyria and all the horde that is with him, for there are more with us than with him." That king with him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. And the people took confidence from the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. Hezekiah. So we praise the Lord that He is the one who protects us, though we have difficulties and、um, troubles coming our ways. God protects us. The sheep not only relies on the shepherd to be protected and to guide, but also to be saved. He is our salvation. The Lord says, "I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. There is no other way of salvation under the heavens given to mankind other than Jesus Christ." Jesus Christ is the mediator between God and man. It is only through Jesus Christ that we are saved. We cannot rely on ourselves. We cannot rely on any other gods. Only Jesus Christ. Jesus say, "If anyone enters by me, he will be saved." And when God saved the Israelites from the Egyptians, He sent the ten plagues to let Pharaoh know that their gods has no power, but. Jehovah God is Almighty, and we see that the ten plagues attacked the Egyptians, such as the Egyptians worshipped、um, the god of the frogs, and so God sent a, a bunch of frogs onto the their land, and then they also worshipped、um, the god of grasshopper, and so God sent the grasshoppers. And so God sent the plagues to let them know that their gods are powerless; they are nothing before Him. And God gave rescue to the Israelites. And today we are the same. We have been saved by the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, "Truly, truly, I say to you, if..." Not by me, nobody can come to the Father. So if it's not by Jesus Christ, then no one can come to the Father. Jesus Christ is the only way that can lead us to God the Father. The Israelites testified what God has done to the Egyptians, and therefore they trusted in God and believed in Him. And we have seen the many things that God, Jesus Christ, has done for us, and we place our trust in Him, and He will bring us salvation. We. Are Vietnamese, and we believe that there is God. We believe that there is a Creator. We believe that God created、uh, animals and grass and gives us water, food to eat. When we eat, we drink from the heavens from God, and we are grateful to God. But do we place our trust? In the Son of God to have salvation, that is the important question. He is—is is he worthy of you holding on to so that you can have salvation? Come, humble yourself and worship 
God as, and Jesus as your Lord and Savior and rely on Him for your salvation, for sure you will be saved. We are sheep. We have gone astray. And the shepherd goes to seek the sheep. Jesus shared a story, told a parable of a hundred sheep. One sheep was went astray and was lost, and the shepherd left the ninety-nine to find the lost sheep, and to find and save and to bring back home, and rejoice when that sheep was found and brought back. We are lost in our ways, but the Lord came and seek and found us. The Son of Man, the Son of Man here talks about Jesus Christ, the one who came to become man. He came to die for us, and he came to find that which was lost. Who did he come to find? He came to find those who know the way, the ones who are in the sheepfold. No, he comes to find the lost. The requirement for you to be found is to know, acknowledge that you are lost, that you need salvation from the Lord, and He will give salvation when we come to the Lord and say, "Lord, I have gone the wrong way. I have gone astray. I do not know you, Lord, and you have created me, and you have come to save me. Please come and dwell in my heart, Lord, in my life, and save me, and give me salvation and life." For you are my salvation. I need you in my life, Lord. Please dwell in my heart and in my life, and God will come and give you salvation from Him. And when you belong to the Lord, He always provides for us. In Psalm 23, says, "The Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want anything else. He leads me to still waters. He guides me." He leads me in righteousness for His name's sake. He provides for us, and He is our shepherd. The ver- verse nine b says, "I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will go in and out and find pasture. If we rely on the Lord, we will enter in and go out and find pasture." Forty years in the wilderness, God taught the Israelites to rely on Him, the One who provides for them in all their needs. He provided for them manna from heaven. He prov- he caused water to come out of the rock so that they will quench their thirst. And amazingly, for forty years, their clothes, their shoes in the wilderness, was not worn out. In Deuteronomy eight two to four says, "And you shall remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you through these forty years, that He might humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart." Whether you would keep his commandments or not, and he humbled you and let you hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. For forty years, your clothing did not wear out on you, and your foot did not be worn. So we rely on the Lord to guide, to protect, and provide. But we also rely on Him mainly for abundant life. If we have everything else, and everything else will pass away, everything of this world will pass away. And now God gives us strength, and it will pass away. We have clothing, but then it will also fade. And we have houses and everything, but the most important is abundant life—a life that is abundant, that has a good relationship with God. Last week we learned about Noah. God told Noah that there will be a flood, and it would destroy, and everything would die. And so Noah focused on building the ark. What do you think if Noah, during that whole time? He built a house, and he tried to make his house to be bigger, to be grand, to have more trees and fruits, and take care of his sheep. Do you think that when the flood comes, 
that house, no matter how big it may be, the, the garden or the field that he has, will it last? He would be foolish if he did not build an ark to save his family, but now he is concerned about building his own house and taking care of his own garden. He has a, he wants a bigger house. He wants more、uh, fruit trees and all that. We are like that. We live in this world. God gives us a house, car. Yes, we do need things. But you know, if we are too concerned about those things, then God says one day the flood will come, the fire will come, and it will destroy everything. What will you have left? When all we live for is this world, if we rely on the Lord, then we will have abundant life,、uh, eternal life in Him, and we come to Him, and we will enjoy the life that we have right now with Christ. We have a peaceful life. We have a joyful life. We have life with hope, with love. We have patience, and we have all the beautiful characters. Of God, and we will continue to live with Him in eternity. Right now, we are walking with the Lord. We fellowship with Him. We hear His voice. We talk with Him. We obey His holy will, and we rely on Him. Those are the good things that we have in this life. But then, in eternity, we will be with Him, and in eternity, we will praise Him. We will、um, enjoy His glory. And his greatness in his holy presence, Jesus said very clearly in verse ten, "The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that you may have abundant life. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Jesus is the shepherd that gave his life so that we can be saved. If he did not give his life." Then we will die. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. We praise the Lord and thank Him for His His sacrifice for us, and we want to bring many others into His fold. The Israelites were God's people, but praise the Lord that He widened His arms to accept not just the Jews, but to receive anyone who will come to be a sheep in His fold. And so, in verse sixteen, and I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. We thank the Lord that you and I have heard God's voice, and we have come home to be in His fold, to be guided by Him, to be protected and provided by Him. And if we sitting here, sitting in this. In this、uh, place right now, and if there's any who say right now, Lord, I am a sheep that have gone astray. I hear your voice, Lord. Help me to hear your voice and become your sheep. Co- pull me to be close to you, Lord, and to be your sheep. And the Lord says, For this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father, who no one can take away the life of Jesus, not because of Judas selling Jesus for thirty pieces of silver. No one can crucify Jesus. He could be on that cross for a thousand years and not die, but no, Jesus was willing to lay down his life. He said. I lay it down of my own accord. I lay it down. That means I lay my life down, and I can take it back up again. So praise the Lord that He was willing to die so that we can live. We cannot rely on no one, no one else, none other. For salvation plan was accomplished through by Jesus Christ, and that is the basic foundation, the basic way, the only way. Jesus died. 
and resurrected. That is our foundation. In 1 Corinthians 15, 17, and if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. We believe in Jesus Christ for only He has died and resurrected. All other people, there are some people who have died and, and come back to life, but afterwards they die. But our Lord Jesus Christ, who died and was raised and resurrected and went to heaven, and He is now living amongst us, amongst His people, and He is dwelling in our hearts, those who trust in Him. Who are you relying on? Or what are you relying on? Are you relying on yourself? Are you encouraging yourself, saying that I have the power, I can resolve the difficulties in my life to rely on ourselves and then fail? I do not want you to raise your hands, but have you experienced that? Where you say, oh, I can solve my own problems. I can uh, take the exam easily. I can take care of all the problems in life to rely on yourself, to rely on your own understanding. But God calls us to rely on Him and Him alone. Jesus Christ is God, and He is the Good Shepherd, and He has total power and total authority to guide, to protect, and to give you salvation and eternal life. Continue to listen to God's voice and to go in His ways. Let's come to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank You, Lord, that you, that we are powerless people. Though You give us some power and some understanding and wisdom, but altogether, Lord, we are weak. Spiritually, we fall after, um, time after time. But Lord, you have given us Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd, who came to this world to sacrifice of his life. And he is the door for the sheep. And he is the shepherd. And Lord, help us to follow your voice, Lord, so that we will receive the blessings that you reserve for your sheep. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.